You are very welcome to this brief introduction to the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 1 through 22. Let's get into it. We are still in the second of seven major movements in the book, dealing with the first church in Jerusalem as it begins to expand. First, by the apostles' witness to the risen Christ, in particular, before the Jewish authorities. First, the authorities annoyed by the apostles. We read from verse 1. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priests and the commander of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them, angry because they were teaching the people and announcing in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So they seized them and put them in jail until the next day, for it was already evening. Since the purpose of a brief introduction is not to teach the passage, we shall try to share a few observations to help fill in the background. Priests, remember, are officially chosen men who pray and offer sacrifices to God on behalf of their community. Those of you who know New Testament theology realize that every Christian becomes a priest of God. The commander of the guard was responsible to maintain peace within the temple precincts. Sadducees were some 200 or more descendants of the priest Zadok. They managed the temple, representing the government of synagogues across the empire. The Sadducees were known to refuse the oral law taught by rabbis and to deny the reality of angels, miracles, prophets, and resurrection, at least in the present times. Many Jews, past and present, believe that the Lord gave to the prophet Moses two laws, one written, which is the Torah, and the other oral, which is official commentary on the Torah, known only to rabbis. Now, some Sadducees may have believed in the reality of angels, miracles, and so forth, but they did not believe that these appeared at the present time or that there would be any resurrection from death in the present time. There were other active Jewish sects in Judea at this time, including the Essenes and the Qumran community, who avoided temple worship, forming separatist communities. This was the evening of that day. Peter and John had gone to the temple at about 15 hours, or 3 p.m., so may have been teaching for several hours before they were arrested. Part 2. The Apostles' Message Bears Fruit Verse 4 reads, But many of those who had listened to the message believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. The Greek text can mean 5,000 more were added to the earlier 3,000, or that number came to 5,000 total. Now, remember, it was mostly men who came to the Jerusalem feasts, and it was men who were counted. Here is a query to discuss in your Bible study groups. What is the connection between hearing, faith, and the Holy Spirit? We recommend that you read Galatians 3, 2, and 5, as well as Romans 10, 17. In a third section, we read how authorities seek reasons for prosecution. From verse 5, On the next day, their rulers, elders, and experts in the law came together in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others, who were members of the high priest's family. After making Peter and John stand in their midst, they began to inquire, By what power or by what name did you do this? Rulers included feared political authorities, 
elders were mostly respected synagogue and community chiefs, whereas scribes, called experts in the law, were exactly that. Luke mentions them further in the Gospel of Luke chapter 11 and elsewhere in the book of Acts. The high priests at this time included Annas, who had served from the year 6 through 15, followed by Caiaphas, and later by Ananias. Caiaphas was Anna's son-in-law, whom the Romans made high priest when they deposed Annas. Both were popularly called high priest. When asked by what power, we recall that some Jews employed the term power for Yahweh himself and for any visible manifestations of Yahweh, two powers in heaven. So they probably meant by what divine power or authority. As to the question about a name, Jews often employed the term name for Yahweh himself or for any other spiritual being parading as a god. Now, the apostles reply to their query quite directly and truthfully, along with the man who had been healed. From verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, replied, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today for a good deed done to a sick man, by what means this man was healed, then let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this man stands before you healthy. Uh, The text in green represents variant readings found in some ancient manuscripts. Now we want to note that Peter replies to the query posed in verse 7. And the particular name that by which the man was healed is that of Jesus Christ. From this text and other New Testament passages, we learn that the human or historical Jesus is himself the divine risen Christ, crucified by the authorities, then raised from death by God, and it is that name that has power to heal. So, the man stood there healed and healthy. We comment that real acts of divine healing prove to be complete and long-lasting, unlike fake healings done by charlatans and false religions. What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Both apostles and ordinary Christians may be filled or empowered with the Holy Spirit as often as they choose to obey Jesus. See Ephesians 5.18. This is especially needed when we are confronted by hostile authorities. See Luke 12.12. Now, the apostles very purposefully exalt the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 11, This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you builders that has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst people by which we must be saved. The phrase, this Jesus, is literally in Greek, this one, referring either to this name or to this Jesus. Both are equally true. The reference to a stone is drawn from Psalm 118, verse 22. Jesus himself had quoted this verse, see Luke 20, verse 17. The risen Christ and his followers form a new kind of temple made of living stones. Thus the cornerstone serves as a kind of metaphor for the Lord Jesus Christ, who is chief of his community. The Dead Sea Scroll, Damascus document, chapter 4, verse 12, refers to builders as the religious leaders. There is salvation in none other. Now in verse 9, 
To be saved meant to be healed. However, we understand that, according to both Testaments, salvation includes every free gift that God has promised. For Christian believers, this includes forgiveness of sins, God's Holy Spirit, daily joy, strength to change how we live, promised resurrection from death at the return of Christ, followed by everlasting life and participation in the coming kingdom of God. By declaring that there is no other name, we recall that the name in heaven is that of Yahweh himself, and the name under heaven is that of Jesus, who was called in Hebrew and Aramaic Yehoshua, or Yeshua for short, Hamashiach, that is, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Promised King. In English, Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, and glorified. In fact, to this very day, there is no other religion that offers free salvation to all who believe. We're told that we must be saved, not that we may be saved, or should be saved, need to be saved, but we must. This is a duty. Compare Acts 2.40, where Peter said to the Jews of his day, Be saved! Next, the authorities examined the evidence regarding the man who had been healed. Verse 13, When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and discovered that they were uneducated, ordinary men, they were amazed, recognizing these men had been with Jesus. And because they saw the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say against this. They had been with Jesus. Remember, you're in my daily walk with Jesus, obeying his commandments, being filled with his Holy Spirit, Loving one another proves more convincing than all that scholars can tease out of archaeology or from the original languages of the Bible. Seventhly, the authorities begin to collude privately. Verse 15. When they had ordered them to go outside the council, they began to confer with one another, saying, What should we do with these men? For it is plain to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable, miraculous sign has come about through them, and we cannot deny it. But to keep this matter from spreading any further amongst the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. The council in Greek is called the Sanhedrin, the highest Israelite authority. It included the rulers, elders, and scribes mentioned earlier, most of whom were Sadducees. The miracle is called a sign. However, the council stopped short of acknowledging that the sign resulted from faith in Jesus. They warned the apostles. Luke chose this particular Greek verb, which had been used in the Greek Bible at 4 Maccabees 9.5, wherein it applies to Greek tyrants threatening young Jews with torture and death unless they defile themselves. Compare its use in 1 Peter 2.23, where it is used of Jesus. In the eighth part, the authorities forbid the apostles to speak. So they called them in and ordered them not to speak or to teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Whether it is right before God to obey you rather than God, you decide. For it is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. Now, the term speak, used by the authorities, is an unusual verb which may imply fake prophecy or bombastic nonsense, as used in Second Peter 2, of pagan preachers. Whether it is right or not, 
is the legal term dikaios, meaning legally correct. To obey is to follow a legitimate authority, and here, of following a higher authority than that of the Sanhedrin. That which they had seen and heard, being three witnesses, the apostles and the healed man, knew that the council must receive their testimony, as required in Deuteronomy 19.15, illustrated in Matthew 18.16. Lastly, the authorities threatened the apostles. After threatening them further, they released them, for they could not find how to punish them on account of the people, because they were all praising God for what had happened. For the man, on whom this miraculous sign of healing had been performed, was over forty years of age. Now, these same authorities would later find ways in which to punish both the apostles and the disciples. If you feel there is a need to do so, then discuss how we should behave when opposed by hostile authorities. You might pose these queries. A. What should be our public message? What should be our attitude towards hostile authorities? How should we reply when asked about our public message? What should we reply when asked by what authority we speak in public? And how should we comply when forbidden to speak our public message? Try to base all of your replies on Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 22. May the Lord Jesus Christ fill you and empower you with his Holy Spirit as you teach this passage as you implement this passage, and as you empower others to do the same.